Okay, um, many of you... Uh, many of you have seen the movie Dr. Doodle, I'm assuming. And in this movie, um, Dr. Doodle befriends exotic and domesticated animals. And when you watch this movie, you get the notion that these animals are cute, cuddly, adorable, and they can pretty much all be domesticated. Um, in reality, these animals are gruesome, vicious, and bred to kill, and have a sense to kill. Uh, currently, nine states in the United States of America legally allow the possession of an exotic animal without any permit or warrant. So you can literally find a snake off the side of the street that could be the most poisonous snake in North, snake, snake in North America, and you can keep it in a cage and keep it in your house. Um, it should be illegal throughout the country to own an exotic pet, permit or not. And the way that I would say that it relates to this whole classroom would be that if anyone can own these pets, you can be exposed to them and they are often vicious and carry diseases and I will go deeper into that. Um, I'll be covering the acquisition process of owning an exotic pet, the negative aspect of owning an exotic pet, and the alternate domestic choice for a pet. So the acquisition process starts off um, with their sale and possession of exotic animals is regulated by a patchwork of federal and local laws, and they generally, generally vary by community and animal. Uh, millions of wild animals, including reptiles, large felines, non-human primates, and others, are kept in private possession in the US, and it's becoming a multi-billion dollar a year industry. Um, animals enter the exotic pet trade from a variety of sources. Some are stolen from the na native habitat, um, some are surplus from zoos, uh, animals that they can't keep or take care of. And some are sold at auctions or in pet shops. And now a new booming industry is over the internet. Um, you can purchase an exotic animal simply if you type in the animal's name on Google and then search breeder or for sale, you can pretty much find that animal. Um, the negative aspect of owning an exotic pet is many exotic pets transmit deadly diseases and these diseases include herpes B, monkeypox, and salmonellosis. And according to the Center for Disease Control, an estimated 90% of all reptiles carry and shed salmonella in their feces. So these include turtles, snakes, lizards. And when you're cleaning out their cages and whatnot, you can be exposed to salmonella and it will ultimately kill you, if not severely injure your health. Um, as many as 90% of all macaque monkeys are infected with the herpes B virus, and these are these cute little cuddly monkeys that you see in the store and you're so tempted to get. Um, this this uh, herpes B virus is harmless to monkeys, but it's often fatal to humans. Uh, across the country, privately held exotic animals have escaped from their enclosures and attacked other humans uh, and animals. So this is another reason why it would be dangerous. Let's say your neighbor owned a pet tiger, and one day it ran through the fence and got out. Uh, you could be in a bit of trouble or your dog or cat in trouble. Uh, an example is in Zanesville, Ohio. There was a troubled, troubled ex-convict animal collector who released his lions, wolves, tigers, and bears, and then shot himself later that night. So obviously he didn't deal with repercussions, but the neighborhood did. So police and other authorities have to get on this, and it's a very dangerous thing. Um, exotic pets purchased as infants are abandoned by their keepers as they age. So when you get these animals, you may think they're so cute as little pups or little baby animals. Um, and then they grow up, and once they hit puberty, their animal instincts come through, and they can get very vicious, and they can hurt you, essentially. Um, alternative pets could be dogs. Uh, they're the first to be domesticated. They're great around humans. They're smart, obedient, and loyal. And you can usually find a dog that will relate well to your family and will mesh in very well into the household. Um, cats, they're active and love to show affection. They can be very independent at times. If you know they're inside cats, outside cats, you can leave them alone at times. Uh, depending on the breed, they can look exotic. So if you're into maybe possessing an exotic pet, you could get a cat. I know they have hairless cats, cats that look like tigers, um, stuff like that, whatnot. Um, lastly, fish. 
Uh, they're very low maintenance, majestic and colorful, and they're suitable for ponds, tanks, and bowls. And it often looks very nice when you have it in a household setting and maybe put some nice little pieces inside the tank. Um, so in conclusion, what has to be understood about the difference between domesticated animals and wild animals is that domesticated animals don't do well without people and wild animals do well without people. Would you keep a cat in a fishbowl, a hamster in a horse stable, a dog in your snake tank? No, because it's not a suitable environment for these animals. So if what I've said affects you in any sort of way, uh, you can either reach out to state legislators or just simply not buy an exotic pet if that's what you're planning on doing in the first place. Um, it's a safer alternative getting a domesticated pet because once again, if these wild animals get loose, you can hurt people around you, you can catch a deadly disease. Uh, I appreciate all of you for listening and thank you for having me here. Felt more comfortable.